My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of these math problems from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 287. Please turn to it. Page number 287, problem number 138. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here is what's going on. We have a high school and we are told that in this high school we have 300 kids. 300 kids we are told who study either French or Spanish or both. All 300, all 300 of these kids, kids study either French or Spanish or both. In other words, there is nobody who studies neither out of those 300. We are further told that 100 of these students, 100 of these 300 students do not study French. Well, if they do not study French and everybody studies either French or Spanish or both, what that means is that 100 must study only Spanish. This implies that 100 must study only Spanish. Because they do not study French and everybody, all, all 300 students study one or the other or both. The question is how many of them study both? Let's see what they tell us. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement they tell us that in the first statement, number 138, that 60 do not study Spanish. 60 do not study Spanish. Well, if they, if they do not study st Spanish, that implies that 60 must study, must study only French. And we have here 100, we also have 100 who study, who study only Spanish. If we add them up, 60 plus 100, 60 plus 100, that gives us 160. The total is 300. And everybody studies one or the other. So what the situation that we have is this here. If we, if we put here Spanish and French, Spanish and French, let's put them in the alphabetical order, French and Spanish, then we know that 100 of them must study only Spanish. So that 100 is here. They further tell us that they further tell us that 60 of them do not study Spanish. Well, if 60 of them do not study Spanish, they must study only French. That 60 goes here. So this 60 plus this 100 is only 160. There are 300 total kids. The other 140 must be the one who study both. 300 minus 160 is the both. Must study both. So the first statement by, by itself does the job quite nicely. Huh? There must be 140 kids who study both of the, both of the languages. A, B, B, C, E. A, B, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at the second statement. Well, I shouldn't have raised that part. That part did not come from the first statement, that came from the problem itself. So that applies to both statements, obviously. They tell us that total of, a total of 240 study Spanish. 240 study Spanish. But this part tells us that 100 study only Spanish. Because we are told, we are told that 100 of them do not study French. Well, if they do not study French, we are explaining the same thing all over again. If they do not study French, and everybody studies one or the other or both, there is nobody who studies neither. There is nobody who studies neither. All 300 of, them all 300 of, the, all 300 of the students study either French or Spanish or both. And we are told that 100 of them do not study French. Well, if those 100 do not study French, they must study Spanish. 
But then they go on to tell us in the second statement that 240 total, total of 240 is Spanish. So here's the situation again. 100 studies Spanish, so here is our French, here is our Spanish, only Spanish, so that 100 goes here. But the total of 240 is study Spanish. Where, is the, where do we put that 140? That 140 must go here. Of the 240, total for Spanish, 100 are only Spanish and 140 are both. 140 of them are both. So second statement also does the job quite nicely. This was actually quite straightforward, simple Venn diagram problem. The answer is D. Either of these statements will do the job nicely by itself. Let's go to the next one, number 139. Number 139. In the number 139, they're looking for the median number of employees per project. So apparently we have different projects going on in the company and different number of people are assigned to each project. And the question is, what's the median number of, pro median number of employees assigned to, the, assigned to these projects? Since they're looking for median, Median, of course, we know means the 50th percentile is what we're looking for, the middle 50th percentile. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, they tell us that a quarter, a quarter of all projects have four or more employees assigned. A quarter of, quarter of all the projects have four or more employees assigned. So if you present here the number of employees on this line here, a quarter of them have four or more assigned. 25% of all the projects, 25% of all the projects have four or more people assigned to it. Is that enough for us to figure out the median, which is the middle 50%? We know the top end, we know nothing else. The first statement by itself is not enough. The first statement by itself is not enough. A D B C E. A D B C E. Now that we established the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement they go on to tell us. In the second statement they go on to tell us that 35%, 35% of the projects of the projects have two or fewer. 35% of all the projects have two or fewer. Well, if they have two or fewer, what they're telling us is that 35% of all the projects have either only one person working on it or two people working on it. That's all. And that's, that's the bottom 35% here. Two or fewer. Now, don't look at the first part, obviously. We cannot combine the two. So just look at the second statement. Simply knowing that, and is that enough for us to figure out the median, the middle 50%? The answer, of course, is no. You know where we're going with this thing. Answer, of course, is no. But when we put them together, when we put them together, by itself is no good. But when we put them together, then we can put the two information together. Two or fewer. Two or fewer. We put them together. This is... This is two statements put together. If the bottom if the bottom 35 percent, excuse me, if the bottom 35 percent have if bottom 35 percent of the projects, or well, I shouldn't say bottom 35 percent, but let me rephrase it. If 35 percent of the projects have two or fewer people working on it, and 25 percent of the people have uh, on the of the projects have four or more people working on it, that tells us that the middle 40 percent, 40 percent of the projects must have exactly I'm going to erase this part, I need the room exactly three people assigned, three assigned 40% of the projects 
the 40% of the project must have had three assigned. And what is that 40% force? It's right here. Two or fewer, four or more. Our 50th percentile is going to be right here. This is our 50th percentile. And therefore the median number of employees, the median number of employees assigned per project is exactly three. Is exactly three. We were trying to look at the midpoint. We did that. The middle 50%, the 50th percentile. In other words, half the projects will have more than three people working on it, and the other half of the project will have fewer than three people working on it. That's all. In the middle is exactly three people working on that project. As a matter of fact, the middle, the middle band here, the mid band here, which is a very broad band, the middle 40% of the project. 40% of all the projects have exactly 30 people. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's go on to the next one, number 140. Number 140. Number 140, they're simply asking us, was was the appointment was the appointment on Wednesday? That's all. That's all they're asking you. Pretty straightforward question. Was Juan's appointment on Wednesday? Let's see what they tell us. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement they tell us the 60 hours. 60 hours before. Sixty hours before the appointment was Monday. They tell us that exactly 60 hours before Juan's appointment time happened to be a Monday. But they don't tell us what time on Monday. We do have no idea what time on Monday. All we know is that if we go 60 hours back in the past, it was a Monday. So what do we do here? Well, we have no choice but to look at the situation in a comprehensive manner to cover our derriere. So to cover our derriere, what we're going to do is to look at the two extreme scenarios. Let's look at two extreme scenarios where it was a Monday, 60 hours before the appointment time. One extreme, one extreme was that maybe it was Monday at the stroke of midnight. Stroke of midnight Monday. Right before Sunday ended, right when the Sunday ended, and the Monday began, a nanosecond after the stroke of the midnight, the beginning of Monday, just the beginning of Monday, zero hours Monday. Another possibility is that maybe it was, maybe it was, maybe it was a nanosecond right before Monday ended. 11, 11 hours and, and uh, 11 p.m. and 11, 11, 11 59 p.m. and 59 seconds or 59, you get the idea. Just a split second before the end of the Monday. Do you understand? Let's see what happens. If that's the case, then by Tuesday, Tuesday by Tuesday at this at the beginning of the Tuesday would be exactly 24 hours. The beginning of Wednesday, this is the beginning of Wednesday, Wednesday at the stroke of midnight would be 48 hours. But we need to go 60 hours. We need to go 60 hours, so we need to add 12 more hours to it. So that's the beginning of Wednesday. The stroke of midnight is 48 hours. By the time we add 12 more hours, we end up at Wednesday noon. Wednesday at noon or 60 hours. That's one possibility. So the question was, was this appointment on Wednesday? The answer in this scenario, yes, if, if exactly 60 hours before his appointment time happens to be the stroke of midnight, the beginning of Monday, if exactly 60 hours before his appointment happens to be just the beginning of Monday, then his appointment happens to be exactly at noon on Wednesday. Was his appointment on Wednesday? The answer in this case is yes. His appointment was on Wednesday. Let's look at another scenario. Well, you can tell, you can tell immediately what's going to happen. Whatever happened here, everything is going to happen 24 hours later. So we, instead, of, instead of Wednesday noon, we're going to end up on Thursday noon. Let's see. So by Tuesday, by Tuesday at 24 hours, It's going to be 24 hours. Now you know what I mean by 24 hours. That's the time that we are showing here. 
by the end of Wednesday, 24 hours, that's the end of Wednesday, that's our 48 hours. But we still have 12 more hours to go. Well, if we go 12 more hours, that's the end of Wednesday. It's the beginning of Thursday. By the, by the time we go 12 more hours, we're looking at Thursday noon. It's 60 hours. So was his appointment on Wednesday? No, his appointment was not on Wednesday if exactly exact if exactly 60 hours before his appointment happened to be just a nanosecond before the end of Monday. It was still a Monday, but just a split second before the end of Monday. But in that case, his appointment would be on Thursday noon. So what, what the first statement tells us, all we can get out of the first statement, all we can get out from the first statement is that based on the fact that his appointment 60 hours before his appointment was Monday, we can tell for, with certainty, we can tell for certainty that his appointment must have been somewhere between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. But we cannot tell exactly when the appointment was. We cannot tell the appointment was on Wednesday. It could be anywhere between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. That's all the first statement tells us. The first statement does not do the job. The first statement does not do the job. A, B, B, C, E. Now that we've started the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now that the answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be either B, C, or E. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that second statement tells us that his appointment his appointment was between 1 and 9 p.m. His appointment was between 1 and 9 p.m. So when we're looking at second statement, that's exactly what it means. We cannot look at anything. We cannot process any information at all that we got from the first statement. You have to delete your memory. So this here's what's going on. We're looking at only the second statement. So I come up to you and I, I come up to you and I tell you, I, I'm, I come up to you and I tell you that my appointment is between 1 and 9 p.m. Between 1 and 9 p.m. Can you tell me if my appointment is on Wednesday? To which you will say either what the hell or you'll slap me. That's a silly question. How the hell can I tell you if the appointment was Wednesday simply knowing the fact that it's between 1 and 9 p.m.? That's just silly. That's just damn silly. Second statement does not do the job. Simply knowing that the appointment was between 1 and 9 p.m. does not enable us to tell whether the appointment was on Wednesday. Come on, that's silly. Second statement does not do the job. But when we put the two statements together, what happens? Now let's put them together. When we put them together, what the first statement tells us, first statement tells us for sure, we know for sure from the first statement that his appointment was somewhere between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. His appointment was between Wednesday noon, let's put it different colors, for the flare of the dramatic. Okay, watch what happens. We know that his appointment was between Wednesday noon. We know for a fact that his appointment was between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. That we know for sure. It has to be between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. The second statement goes on to tell us that his appointment was between 1 and 9 p.m. Well, if it's between 1 and 9 p.m., it rules out Thursday. Because Thursday are only the morning hours. It cannot go beyond Thursday noon. It was between Wednesday noon and Thursday noon. And because of the fact that it's between 1 and 9 p.m., it could not possibly have been on Thursday. His appointment must have been on Wednesday. His appointment must have been on Wednesday between 1 and 9 p.m. Putting the two statements together does the job beautifully. Does the job beautifully. The answer is C. I tell you every time when we do these problems, I do not know what kind of people come up with these questions, but it requires the mind of a, of a, of a different dimensions to actually create these kind of questions. Being able to solve these questions is one thing, but to be able to create these questions is entirely different things. Anyway, we're going to end on that note. It was a, it was an interesting question. We're going to end uh, end at that note. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye now.